Creative Summit, it's a chance for you know people to get together and share what their developments are, how they're looking to push the medium even further. I think anyone who's involved in 3D has to take notice of what goes on at this event. If you're doing 3D, you've got to come and see you know what's going on. It's great to get the people together who are really passionate about 3D to share ideas. Getting together with the folks who are pushing the envelope, who are experimenting, is inspirational and educational and a lot of fun. The research centre, I think, is a really exciting part of the conference. So for us, you know, that's a really important bit to feed into our future planning so we can see where we should be investing our, our future. The amazing thing about the 3D Creation Summit is it really enthuses the people who come here. It, it makes people realise that there is a lot of work being done. It makes people realise that the quality of work is improving dramatically year on year. The Creative Summit's a great opportunity to listen to some of the other 3D producers and directors in the movie industry and in the TV field as well. We think it was a great event last year and uh, I think there's great participation from one of the key people in, from the industry. There's very few events like this where 3D is discussed seriously and there's a range of 3D content being looked at. Hopefully we can learn from each other and that the academics can learn what the industry's doing but maybe the industry can learn a little bit from how academic research into 3D could help them in some way. The reason I'm here is I'm hoping that if someone who's heard me talk about my practice that they might be able to help me with technology for example. It's pretty nice to actually see what people are working on and actually get uh, to possible collaborations. The industry professionals coming together with what they're doing in 3D and it is really current. And so for Deluxe, that's, it's really useful information to know how to deliver to the market. Gilly and I are coming from Wellington, New Zealand, and that's pretty much as far as you can get. But you know, it's great to see all the other stereographers from the States and from around Europe, and we can all come together and just talk about our experiences over the last 12 months. London's Creative Summit is the only gathering where filmmakers come to learn about the state of the art of 3D movie making and storytelling. So this is the annual event where the best in the business come to hear from the best in the business and find out how to take 3D to the next level. We're really excited about 3D at Pixar. We're always looking for ways to tell stories, to enhance our audience's connection to our characters. And 3D is a great way to bring them into that world in a way that they maybe haven't been brought in before. And I've never really understood why everything in terms of art isn't 3D because it's just so colossally better than 2D. But I love 3D, it's amazing. All my film could have been shot in 3D. 2013 was a record box office year for Hollywood and that was because of 3D ticket sales. The momentum is clear. Every year, more 3D movies win more Academy Awards and more BAFTAs. So financially, but creatively, 3D has really come into its own. Mark Commode has uh, come out on the back of Gravity and said, yeah, you know what, this is good. Gatsby. Um, was a successful film. It's better in 3D than in 2D. Peter Jackson's Habit films are better in 3D than in 2D. Life of Pi was sort of quite a big thing for so many of the uh, Academy voters to see that that was something that wasn't just a sort of big showy glitzy thing but actually really added such depth to the narrative. Gravity has been the biggest success in 3D in the past year. Hopefully we'll see a more willingness to engage with 3D in a very experimental sense thanks to Gravity. Uh, Gravity is, is now rewritten the history books once again. It did what Life of did last year. It raised the bar in terms of the public's consciousness of 3D. And, and it's used as a creative tool in, in dramatic storytelling. 3D for a long time was just a gimmick to get audiences into the theaters. It's now given its due and has been seen more as an emotional storytelling tool, as something that's part and parcel of the film going experience. So before just a sharp stick in the eye was enough to kind of sell a movie as 3D. Audiences don't tolerate that anymore. They're looking for something more substantial. I still see resistance to 3D because of urban myths like it costs more or I you know I don't want to wait 20 minutes to change lenses lens changes are three minutes so you'd think that the success of these films especially in the cinematography area would convince people that it's no longer the world it used to be but there's still a lot of education that needs to happen. The novelty factors kind of wearing off and so people are judging the film for merit for their story. The amount of gravity has been brought up today has been one of those milestones that encourages the viewer to go back to the cinema to keep on watching 3D. Putting uh, 3D up there and viewing it as, as it is not an uncomfortable experience anymore. 3D on the TV hasn't been the game changer that everybody was hoping. And then a lot of people in the press were beginning to bundle all 3D together. 
we're involved at storyboard stage, script stage, we're on set, we're providing on set 3D support as well. So the whole process has, has matured. Uh, over the next year, uh, we're going to see companies like Pixar, James Cameron, just continue to immerse in us in ways that we never even thought were possible. The studios are definitely uh, still very keen on, on 3D. TV is starting to look more interesting again, with, particularly with the release of audio stereoscopic 3D TVs. It needs a healthy home entertainment market to help 3D thrive. There's going to be other technologies like high dynamic range, 4K TVs are on the market, high frame rate and all those things coming into play as well, which, which creates additional tools for a director who tells the story. The thing is about technology, we all know, it's only a matter of time, it's all going to come. I think the 3D uh, for the domestic television market is, is going to stall until glasses free sets. I think as far as cinema goes, giant screen, 3D will always have a place then. The future when we come to auto series copy, combine it with 3D laser scanning and 3D printing, then the things will kind of really move on. So I'm very happy that in America, in Europe, in Russia, in China, 3D is pretty successful at the moment and I think it will go on. The fact that we as a studio and we as a community are learning how to use 3D in a subtle, nuanced, sophisticated way is really exciting. Things like high frame rate, I think the 48 on like Desolation of Smaug, I thought it looked stunning and I, I've um, you know, been there for sort of seeing some of the early tests and things like that uh, around the first film and just seeing it progress and just feel so comfortable with it as mm. compared to you know, your initial, you do feel like it's something different and it takes a bit of getting used to it. So um, I think it's going to be a real success. When you watch with your kids a 2D film, they will see, say, oh daddy, you're looking at a flatty. 3D is going to have a very good 2014, it's going to have an even bigger 2015. Uh, it's a beautiful place, uh, the BFI South Bank, and in England we are like between Europe and the US, so it's a great opportunity to meet people from the two worlds, if I can say. So uh, I hope that the third edition will be as good as the second one.